Hey everybody, it's Andy from Andy's Travel Blog, here to actually take the picture of the week. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do have a blog called Andy's Travel Blog. It's at andystravelblog.com. Uh, and I normally post a picture of the week every week. Now, usually whenever I'm traveling more, I like to post from the destinations I am, like Sydney, Singapore, wherever it is. But I haven't really been traveling that much lately. I mean, I know I was in Norway two months ago, but it's kind of a long time for me to be at home two months. Uh, so I wanted to take the picture of the week, and I wanted to show you how I take it. Now, I'm gonna use some good technology. I'm sorry about the wind noise. I'm gonna use some technology to, to show you how I take this picture. Now, with me, I have my Sony a7R III, and I'm gonna be taking this picture of Dallas. Now, as to where I am, I'm in a random parking garage, and I'm not sure I'm supposed to be in this parking garage. That's okay. So what I'm gonna do, I have my Mi Photo tripod right here. I'm gonna get this hooked up, and then we're gonna use this really cool technology to show you exactly how I take the picture of the week. So stick around, I, I don't know, stick or, watch this. Yes, watch this. So like I said, I have my Sony a7R 3 I have the Sony 24 to 70 G Master lens. I'm gonna be at 70 millimeters for this shot. But I've taken this shot in a different way before and I know I need between like 70 and 80. So I have the 24 to 70 G Master. I also have the 70 to 200 G Master in the camera bag. Not sure I'm gonna use it, uh, but let me show you the view that I'm seeing from the 24 to 70. Okay, so you are seeing the actual menu of my Sony a7R III. So in the display here, uh, you're going to see up on the top left, I'm in aperture priority mode, uh, single shot, autofocus, single over on the left, and I'm in wide autofocus, but I'm gonna use the touch screen here in a second. Up top, you'll see that uh, I'm shooting three by two, I'm in raw, and you can see the, uh, the view is just fantastic. So I'm at 70 millimeters right now, and what I'm going to do is just grab a shot. So I'm at one fifth of a second, I have a little bit of wind. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna adjust down to f5.6, and I'm going to, by hitting my function key, I'm going to go over here, I'm gonna change my drive mode to a two second timer, just to make sure, it is kinda of windy, I wanna make sure that my hand is not affecting the shutter time or shutter, yeah, I don't want any impact. Man, you can just hear that wind. I may need to go a little faster. So I'm gonna go at F4, and F4 is okay because I don't need to really need to worry about um, depth of field here. Um, man, this is just turning into a phenomenal image. So what I'm gonna do is, actually let's raise this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I know I can see the air conditioners and all that stuff in the building, but I'm gonna crop that out. So I'm not too worried about that. So let's see here, the one tenth second exposure. And I'm gonna lower my exposure a little bit using my exposure compensation dial. You can really see the color in that sky starting to show through. And let's lower it another stop. And you can see just how pretty that is. And so what I can do is I'm giving myself a lot of room here. Uh, if I wanna use any of this in uh, Photoshop later and blend this together using time blending or something like that. So, let's see here. And now I'm just going back to my metered exposure, which I think is overexposing just a little bit, but what I can do is uh, use my display button to cycle through my displays and check out my histogram. So you can see my histogram is really, I'm exposing a bit to the right, but I'm not blowing out anything, so that's good. And you see those little green little squares there, that means that I am in focus where I wanna be. And if I lower my exposure down a little bit, you're gonna see that everything is kind of pushing left a little bit, which is usually okay with Sony because you can recover a lot of detail in the shadows. And so again, now I'm just sitting here and waiting for my exposure uh, to, to grab whatever I think uh, is right. So I think I have the shots I need. Let's take this into Lightroom and Photoshop and see what we can come up with. It's a beautiful, beautiful night. I think we timed it just right because the color is out of the clouds now. So uh, yeah, let's get back to the computer and see what we can come up with. Okay, we are in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, I think is what they call it now, and they're confusing and never-ending scheme on charging us more money for the same product. 
with minor updates. Anyways, so I have a couple of the images loaded in here. I want to show you just a couple of them and we're going to make our decision. We're going to edit this in real time. I kind of know what I want this to look like and I'm going to see if I can recreate it. So if you remember back to the video, uh, when I had my even metering and we were looking at the histogram, if I look up here, this is going to be a more detailed version of that histogram. Okay, this is the straight out of raw image or straight out of camera raw image. I haven't done anything to it yet. And I'm looking at the histogram here and I am really heavy towards the bright end. And you can see that over here, even though there's still some data left in here, it looks like I'm getting really close to blowing out some of these things. Obviously, my buildings are well exposed here, which is fine. I'm getting a lot of detail in the trees. I'm not really that concerned about the trees. Uh, the main reason that I, I want these trees in the shot and that I'm glad it's springtime again is that there is a huge shopping center, not just the Walmart that you can kind of see here, but there's a, a, a Target that's like right here. And if I go up one level in this parking garage, it's blatantly obvious there's a big old shopping center there. I did not want to Photoshop all that stuff out. So these branches these leaves are going to be huge compositional elements for me uh, they frame downtown well uh, so i'm not worried about how bright these things are so i'm a little hot here so i'm going to go to the minus one exposure compensation so you see i'm getting more color in these clouds so where you're seeing pink here if i go back one image you're seeing this is almost white so what i'm going to do is I think we're going to go with this one. You can see my settings up here, one fifteenth of a second at f4. I was at 70 millimeters with my uh, G Master 24 to 70 lens. And of course, 7952 by 5304. This is a 42.4, I believe, megapixel image. So let's get to work. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my shadows. As I do that, I am getting some of this detail back. Now, I don't want to go all the way up. If I do that, the greens I've found get kind of neon, and I don't really want that. So let's pull my shadows up to about right here. I think the plus 72 is good. I'm not one of those people like Elia Licardi who have to have this on a specific number, 75 or 70 or anything like that. Drag it to where you like it and let it go. Let it go, Elia. Let it go. Anyways, let's mess with the highlights. If I, if I drag these down, it kind of washes out some of the vibrance of it. So I'm going to keep these, maybe pull them down just a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's leave them exactly where they are. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold my option key and I'm going to grab my white clipping point and I'm going to just pull this up until I see some pixels. And that means these pixels are starting to blow out a little bit. So I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. That looks good right there. I'm going to do the same thing for the black clipping point. I'm going to hold my option or alt key, drag this down. Anytime I see a pixel, that means I am in true dark. There's no more information to get back. I tend to like a little bit of that. Okay, good. Now I know what a true dark point is. Okay, so this looks good. I'm not going to mess with contrast right now. Exposure, let's bring it up about... Yeah, about right there. And whenever I bring up the exposure, maybe one more... Um, I, I want to be mindful of my shadows, okay? And now would be a good time to pull down my highlights a little bit. Okay, so this looks good. If I hit my backslash key, this is what we started out with. Here's what we have now. That looks good to me. I'm going to leave clarity, vibrant, saturation alone. Uh, let's get my white balance uh, sorted. So if I go to auto, it's, it's getting a little too crazy. Um, Facebook messages coming in there. I don't really want it that warm. I want it to be a little cooler and let's make it a little less purple. Maybe not that less purple. Let's go to about right there. Okay. So again, this is before this is now I like this. Okay. So I have all these things, uh, left that I can do uh, down here. I'm going to mess with those here in a second. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send this into Photoshop. I'm going to right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so we have the image open in Photoshop. And as I zoom in here, you can see the details are just crisp and wonderful. Loving the sharpness from that 24 to 70 G Master lens. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I, I, I put this into Photoshop for a very specific reason. I'm going to go up to my filter uh, options here, go to Nick Collection, and I'm going to open Nick Color Effects Pro 4. 
the, the Nick collection is it has a long history. It used to be some standalone software. They charged a lot of money for it. Uh, Google purchased them, I think, just for some of their algorithms to incorporate into Snapseed. And then Google sold it to DXO Mark, I believe, uh, who is apparently going to relaunch it, but it's still free for right now. So I'd encourage you to get it while you can. And that's the Nick collection, N I K. Anyway, so Color Effects Pro 4 has a bunch of different filters that I like to use. It just gives me a head start in my editing. So it already kind of showed up here. So Pro Contrast. If I turn this off, this is without any uh, filters applied. I turn it back on. You can see it, it makes things pop a little bit. Um, maybe a little too much here, but I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of that here in a second. So if I add another filter, there's something called Tonal Contrast, which makes everything look way too much. It gives you that like HDR, super ridiculous, turbo, mega, ultra blended look. But I find that if you pull it back here, it doesn't actually look that bad. So if I take it off and turn it back on, you see it gives you a little bit of punch. And so this is pro contrast and tonal contrast turned on. And I want to give myself just a little bit of warmth alongside of this. So I'm just going to add a brilliance and warmth setting. Yeah, this looks good. This is springtime sunset. And add some perceptual saturation. I literally have no idea what this does, but it always sounds cool to me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, here's why I apply this in Photoshop instead of just doing it in Lightroom. If you do this in Photoshop, it's going to apply all of the changes on a separate layer. If you do this out of Lightroom and just go directly into Color Effects Pro 4, it's going to create a new file and all of the changes will live in that file. So I like being able to put this into Photoshop because I can manipulate it after the pull and push where I need to. Uh, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about as soon as this image is done uh, saving. Okay, the image is done saving. So if I turn this layer off and turn it back on, you can see that the changes we made were really pretty awesome. I mean, the sky up here, it looks good. There's there's some gray clouds, but I almost like it. They're very wispy clouds. I don't know if that's a technical term or not, but it almost looks like a long exposure just because of how wispy these clouds are. So I turn it off and turn it on. You can see the, the green down here is turning a little neon, and I want to avoid that where I can. Again, I'm not worried about any of this nonsense down here because we're going to crop that out in a second. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on my uh, layer mask uh, right here. And you see it pops up as a white layer mask. When it comes to layer masks, anything you see here that is white is going to show up. Anything that is black is going to be completely hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my brush key or my brush tool by hitting the B button. Or I could go and hit it over here. And what I'm going to do is I have black selected. I'm going to reduce my opacity up here to 50%. I could type that in, but it's just as easy to hit number 5. You can see that changes to 50%. I'm going to shrink my brush just a little bit, and I'm just going to paint in 50% opacity over the trees. And you'll see that the trees are back to a little bit more believable color. And you can see right here, you still have your white image up here, the white part. But you can see there's just a little bit of gray in here. And uh, let me lower to 20%. I'm going to add 20% on top of that. So it's great because now my greens are not neon. It's a little bit more realistic. Yes, we are embellishing this. I want it to look like what I saw when I was there. I did not see neon trees. So I'm just getting rid of that, but bringing it back to a more believable level because we want to go for natural here. We want to go for, well, a beautiful version of natural. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I like the way this looks. I'm going to add a blank transparent layer. I know the cropping that I want to do is going to get rid of this bottom part right here with the air conditioner on it. But I have this little roof here that I need to worry about, this little overhang, which I think for a fitness center. So what I'm going to do is I created this blank layer because I want to make all the changes in this layer. I'm going to hit the S key to open my clone and stamp tool. And here's really here's something really important if you're going to do this. If you're going to create this blank layer, which I recommend you do to do your cloning and your stamping, make sure you're sampling the current layer and below layers. That way you can make these edits non-destructively. So I'm going to hold my Option key here, select my source, take my opacity to 100. It was already there. Make this a little bigger. I'm just going to paint it in. And you can see I got a little overhang there. So I'm going to undo this, shrink my brush just a little bit and make sure to go down. There we go. 
So this doesn't need to be perfect because this is right in the area that I think I'm going to crop. I just want to get this out of there just so I don't have to worry about it. So it looks significant. It may look sloppy right now, but I guarantee you once we get into cropping, it's just going to look like a tree. We don't need to be too concerned with this. If we were going to, if this was going to be like the main focal point of the image, different story, but I think we're okay here. And then I'm going to hit my J key and I'm just going to, that's my healing brush. I'm just going to replace some of these little bright spots right here. I want to try to minimize those where I can. The human eye is drawn to bright things in the midst of dark things. Uh, so I just want to cover up some of the brighter spots down here. I want people's eyes to be drawn to downtown Dallas, not these random street lights on Haskell Avenue in Dallas, Texas. So just dragging over here. Computer's about to explode from having to work on all of this. Need a new computer. If anybody wants to give me one, let me know. Um, okay, so what do I do about Walmart and Target? I'm okay with these. They're, they're obviously a part of the image. Uh, to get rid of these logos, I could do that. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to use this to advertise for anything, so I don't need to worry about logos being in it. It's, you know, right of panorama, I guess. Okay, so I have my layer, I have my Color Effects Pro 4, my background. What I'm going to do, a lot of people are going to um, get on to me about this, but I am going to, hang on. Nope, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to, actually, let's do this. I'm going to hold Command Option Shift E. That's going to create a new blended layer of everything that I have below. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, instead of, you know, merging all this down. Um, I'm going to crop this later. I'm going to crop it back in Lightroom. So what I'm going to do now is I want to add some sharpness. Uh, and I like doing the sharpening here in Photoshop. Um, and the main reason is going to be all these leaves here. If I were to, sh if I were to do sharpening in Lightroom, it's going to sharpen the whole image. There's a way of doing it in Photoshop that I'm going to show you where you can selectively apply sharpening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold command and hit J. You can do control J on a windows keyboard. I'm going to go to filter, other, high pass. So I'm going to do a high pass filter. My radius is around three pixels. And you're going to see everything go to gray here, except you see all these outlines. Anywhere you see an outline, that's the thing that is going to be sharpened. So you can see all these outlines of the branches down here. What's really going on here is that this is 50% gray. That's the color, the famous neutral gray, 50% gray. Anything that is purely 50% gray, like anything up here, will not be sharpened. Anywhere where you see a line, that will be sharpened. I do not want to sharpen these leaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to end up with this ugly gray layer. Well, what I'm going to do is switch to my brush tool by hitting the B key. And this right here, you can see 0, 0, 50. This is 50% gray. What I'm going to do, I'm going to switch my opacity back to 100. I'm just going to brush in 50% gray where all the leaves are. And this means that anywhere that my brush is going, you can see underneath it, it's getting rid of all of those lines. So that means that the sharpening is only going to be applied to those buildings instead of any of the leaves, because I don't really want to over sharpen those leaves. They could, you know, cut somebody or something like that. Okay, so now once I've done that, looks great, right? Well, no, it doesn't because it's still 50% gray. What I'm going to do is change my blending mode to overlay. And now if I scroll in a little bit and I uncheck this, you see it's kind of soft, bam, sharp. Soft, bam, sharp, okay? So I do like high pass filter, or a high pass for sharpening. A lot of people will tell you they don't, that's okay. There's a lot of different ways to sharpen. A lot of people will go try to refine the edges. I don't really worry about it. I know that high pass filtering works for me. Uh, it's not necessary on every image, but I like it. So now I'm going to shift, and a lot of people are gonna cringe right now, but I'm gonna merge all of these together. Uh, just to save space in my TIFF file, I'm going to save this. I'm going to get out of this file, and then we're going to go back to Lightroom. Okay, so now we have the image back in Lightroom. This is my TIFF file. I've made most of the adjustments I want to make. Now I just have to do my cleanup thing. So 
First of all, let's make sure my buildings are level. So let's try this way. I'm gonna hold my angle key in my crop mode. This actually looks straight right here. So I think we're actually okay. Perfectly straight, way to go me. Um, now I want to make this just a little bit more vibrant. I want to increase the exposure just a little bit uh, because I know whenever somebody displays this on their computer screen, it's typically gonna be a little darker than mine. So I just want to add just a touch of exposure um, and maybe pull the clarity back just a little bit. Okay, so now what can we do to make this even better? So I just hit the M key to bring up my gradient tool. Okay, when I look at the light here, okay, before I, I just showed you that, it was too early. When I look at the light, you see it's the light is coming obviously from this direction right here, and it's getting darker over here. So what I wanna do is I have my exposure, let's pull this about a half stop. I wanna pull down a gradient filter from right here. Okay, what this is going to do is drag whatever effect I have over here across this entire range and it's going to be a gradient. So it's gonna be darker here and lighter here, or the effect is gonna be stronger here and not as strong here. So whenever I, you'll see whenever I bring the exposure down, it's gonna make it a little darker. Now I don't wanna make it that dark. I just wanna have ever so slight darkening just to accentuate where the light's coming from, uh, where things are supposed to be bright and where things are supposed to be dark. So if I turn this off and on, you'll see it just ever so slightly a difference. And now I can bring the exposure on the entire image up just a little bit. And then what we will do, here's the fun part. I'm gonna hit R to get into crop mode. And let's select, I love the two by one aspect ratio for a shot like this. So what it's going to do is lock this in. I'm gonna drag this up and you'll see, remember where we had that overhang? Now the overhang's not there and you can't even really notice it was that sloppy of a clone and stamp job. Uh, if I wanted to, I could bring this up and bring this in. I wanna try to keep it to the distinctive buildings of downtown Dallas and I think this crop right here does a good job of it. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so that looks good. This is a really, really good image. So remember how we had the gradient from here? I love that these branches hide the shopping centers, but now let's guide the eye a little more. So remember how we had about a half stop exposure? I'm gonna bring this down to a full stop. And I'm gonna hold my shift key and I'm gonna drag a filter up, a gradient filter. Why am I holding the shift key? Well, it keeps this 100% level. Uh, so now I'm good, let's drag this up a little bit. And I just want this to be a gradient where you can still see some of the color in the, uh, in the branches, but it's not gonna go all the way down to the bottom. So it kind of leads the eye into the middle. So I really, really like that. So if I go back into my gradient and I turn them both off and then back on, you can see the difference. Maybe I can make this a little bit more gradual. Yeah, I think that looks good. Don't you? Okay, so here's what we started with out of Photoshop. And now here's where we are. So up next, I think we're good. I don't need to sharpen anymore. That would be double sharpening. Let's not get ridiculous. Maybe do a little bit of dehaze just for fun because why not? And that looks good. And now we're going to add just a little bit of a vignette to the whole image. That looks good. Let's go ahead and add a touch more vibrance. Um, and then bring it up one more stop. So I think we're good. We've controlled the highlights well. We've added a lot of detail. The vignette is maybe a little bit too strong. Let's pull this back to about, uh, that looks good. Then let's bring it back down. Okay, so I think we're finally good here. I think this is a really solid image. We got lucky with the clouds, but we were faced with a couple of different challenges, right? We needed to do some clone stamping. We needed to make sure that our highlights were good, and our highlights are kind of pushing it right here. But I think we've, we've maintained a lot of detail in each phase of this edit. So um, this is going to be the picture of the week. From here, I'm going to export it on the long edge, 2048 pixels with a maximum file size of 400 kilobytes and post that to Andy's travel blog. Uh, and that's gonna be it for this picture taking and photo editing tutorial. I sure hope you've enjoyed it. Let's go back to where we started originally. So I hit my backslash key. This was the original image we had. And here is the final image. I love it. So until next time, this is Andy from Andy's travel blog. Take care out there. We'll see you in the skies.